Hello and welcome to the Part 1b Unix Tools course. My name is Markus Kuhn. So this is a somewhat unusual course in the Tripos. Firstly, it's a non-examinable course, so there is no question in any of the Tripos papers on this course. And it's also a quite product-oriented course. We're going to uh, learn how to use a number of software tools that are commonly available on Unix and Unix-like operating systems like Linux and MacOS. Why do we teach such a product-oriented course? The main reason is that um, project supervisors over the years have noticed that they spend quite a lot of time uh, explaining to students um, the use of Unix, the syntax of command line tools, how to write shell script, how to write make files. And out of this observation was born the idea maybe we should teach this more formally in one course uh, to save the project supervisors some time. So not only your project supervisors, but also likely your future employees are quite likely to expect that you are fluent with the Unix command line interface and many of the automation facilities that Unix-like operating systems offer. Um, why do Unix tools play an important role? Well, the Unix operating system, it used to be said is the most second most popular operating system family after Microsoft Windows. That's probably not anymore uh, the case if you count in uh, server applications, uh, embedded systems that run on Linux mobile uh, devices such as Android and iOS, where also the development environment uh, work, operates in a uh, Unix-like environment. Also, um, many of the concepts, terminology that were pioneered by Unix tools have found their way into not just uh, many other development environments, but also into common computer science folklore and vernacular. So you will often find uh, colleagues refer to uh, some notation, use informally some notation that has its origin in, in the Unix shell, for example, um, globbing syntax or wildcard syntax, uh, regular expressions and a number of others. Many of the Unix tools have also been uh, ported to other operating systems. So the Apple macOS operating system, for example, uh, has a form of Unix under the hood and you can open a terminal and have a Unix shell available. Many Unix tools have been ported several times into the uh, Windows operating system, an older attempt to Port Unix tools was the Sigwin project, which uh, created a C library that provided a Unix-like C API under Windows and allowed many Unix tools to be compiled. A more recent effort to make Unix tools available on Windows is WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux, um, which is a Microsoft project that in its first version built a kernel uh, adapter layer such that the Linux uh, kernel API was actually implemented on top of the Windows NT kernel API. There's now a newer version WSL2 available that actually runs the Linux kernel and um, inside a, a virtual machine, but has a lot of interfacing with the Windows operating system such that, for example, the, the same file system namespaces are accessible. Also, Unix tools are quite good examples for very highly functional uh, software interfaces. So from just looking at the style of how uh, Unix tools operate, you may find some useful ideas of how you can structure user interfaces that aren't particularly optimized to be scriptable, to be easily accessible by um, very experienced users who want to integrate them into automation, for example, uh, calling them from scripts, calling them from other programming languages. Um, like other programming courses, you're not going to become familiar 
for by just listening to me and uh, looking at the slides, you actually have to use these tales to develop these tools to develop some muscle memory. So do spend some time actually with an open command terminal and try out many of the things that I'm going to show you here. In fact, the reason why we're teaching this as a uh, recorded online lecture is to allow you to uh, stop the lecture, open a terminal and try out some of the things that you've learned here immediately. Students suggested a couple of years ago that we switch to this format in order to encourage more interactive uh, experimentation with the tools rather than postponing this until the end of a lecture hour. There's also a couple of exercises available on the uh, course materials pages. This is not a complete uh, Unix beginners course. Uh, I assume you have already had some basic exposure at least to the Unix Linux uh, command line environment from uh, first year practicals. Uh, but a quick reminder of some of the things you should already be familiar with is uh, the concepts of a hierarchical file space that there are directories or folders in uh, Unix that you have a tree of the directory tree and that you can reach any file using a so-called absolute path where you have uh, as you descend into a file tree, uh, you write down all the folders into which you des descend and you separate them with a slash and then the final name here is the file that you access and if there is a slash at the start of such a path name, this means you start the descent into the file namespace uh, from the common root directory. If such a path does not start with a slash, it's a relative path evaluated relative to your current working directory. So every process has a working directory from which these relative paths are evalu evaluated. And for example, if you just provide a file name that will be looked up by the operating system in the current working directory, but you can also descend from the current working directory into a subdirectory and another subdirectory. You can also ascend each directory in Unix has as a uh, as one of its subdirectory, a special subdirectory called dot dot that actually refers to the parent directory. So you can go uh, closer towards the root by uh, changing to the dot dot directory. So here we go two directories up in the hierarchy. When I say up, I use the computer science convention that the tree of at the root of a tree is at the top and then we descend into uh, this project directory and then we refer here for example to a phd.tech file. If you ever get lost uh, there's a pwd command that uh, prints out the uh, current working directory. Uh, there's a change directory command that allows you to change the current working directory by providing the path to the new directory into which you want to move. Um, you can list the content of the current directory with the ls command. Commonly people want to have also some metadata like who owns the files, uh, last modification date, size of the file. You can uh, obtain this by adding an option minus l and with an option minus a you see all files including so-called invisible files, which by convention are files that start with a full stop. Um, you should also be familiar with how to edit files. Um, there are lots of uh, graphical user interface editors available, but also some editors that you can uh, execute inside your terminal window. Uh, Emacs is a popular example. VI is another popular editor. Nano is a very simple text editor that might be perhaps most uh, beginner friendly, but it is not actually uh, very functional. Um, doesn't have a very large number of functions. Uh, rm, the remove command, deletes a file. 
make directory creates a new subdirectory. Uh, the rm command on its own can't remove directories, so there's a separate command rmdir, and that only will remove empty directories such that you don't by accident delete a lot of files. Uh, there are options rm-r for recursive deleting that allows you to remove an entire directory tree. Those, of course, should be used with a bit of caution because one can delete quite a lot of files inadvertently this way. You can rename a file with and move files around with the move command. So moving, renaming a file is really just the same operation as moving a file from one name or one place to another. And uh, what sometimes surprises Windows users is that in Unix, you can move a file onto the name of an already existing ply, uh, file and this will atomically replace the destination file. So this can be quite useful if, a, if you have a file like on a web server that is continuously being accessed by other people, then you don't want to remove the old file and then write a new file in place because then other users of that file may see that the file has briefly disappeared and they may see a half written file in place. Instead, what you do is you first write the new version of the file to a temporary location, then you move it onto the new file name, and this way you atomically replace a file name. And if you're inside the command shell and you want to leave, there's two ways. You can type exit, but you can also press the Control D key that tells the shell that you're entering an end of file control character and the shell behaves as if it has been reading out of a file. So if it reaches the end of the file, then the shell will terminate. You can practice command line use if you don't have your own uh, Linux, Mac OS, Windows with WSL uh, machine available. You can also use the SSH tool or on Windows the PuTTY version of SSH to remotely log into some Linux machines that we offer. If you're an undergraduate student, there is a linux.cl.ds CAMAC ARC machine. That's a remotely reachable server version of the Linux MCS machines that we offer in the Intel lab. Uh, if you are a research student, then you also have access to the remote login servers, the S-login machines that the department offers. Uh, these machines here require the UIS password, whereas uh, these here, um, you can't log in from the outside without a, uh, with a password. Instead, you first have to obtain with your departmental password a Kerberos ticket. And for details of how to access these machines, uh, please refer to the computer laboratory web pages.